Hello people. It's been a while since my last upload. Today I have another upgrade for my Ender 3. One that will make my life very easy. It's the Hermit Crab Quick Tool Change System. So without further ado, let's do a quick unboxing and move on to installation. In the box you get this short user manual. You get three tool plates for mounting your hot ends and one fixed plate that will mount to your printer gantry. I actually got two sets because I am also working on a custom Core XY build. I want to be able to use the same tool heads for it. It is similar to the Exchange or Wham Bam Mutant. I decided to go for the Hermit Crab because it was easily available on AliExpress. You also get a few cables. I didn't really use any of them. And you get these mounting plates. One for V-Roller-based gantry design and another for MGN-12 linear rail. And some tools, bolts and screws. The kit includes everything you need for installation on an Ender 3. Here I have my printer disassembled and ready for the Hermit Crab. And because I upgraded to MGN-12 rails, I will be using this mounting bracket. The fixed plate mounts directly to the MGN-12 block but you need to remove the PCB in order to access the mounting screws. And you also need to fix this bracket for holding the belts. The holes are threaded from the factory, and the bolts are included in the kit. With the magic of video editing, the plate is now fixed to the MGN-12 block. Then you can go ahead and tension the belts and fix the PCB. With that, the mechanical installation of the fixed plate is now complete. Now as I mentioned earlier, I plan to use the same tool plates for my new printer. I had to design this piece here to hold the hot end. I printed this piece out of ABS and fixed the M3 threaded inserts with a soldering iron. If you are only going to use the tool plates for the Ender 3, you can directly mount the hot end here. To fix the tool plate, I again had to remove the PCB to access the screws. The good thing is that the kit comes with a variety of M3 bolts, and in most cases they will serve you well. After lining up the ABS part, I can turn over the plate to fix the bolts. You can see here that there are many grooves and recesses. I am not sure if they are designed with a purpose or if they are there for ease of customizability because 3D printers are naturally a high vibration environment. I am always liberal with thread lock to avoid problems down the line. And with that I can fix the PCB and move to the next step. I also thought this would be a good opportunity to upgrade the hot end. I got this clone from AliExpress. I am not sure about the quality and reliability so some torture testing will be required in the future. When I designed the hot end holder, I did not account for the Bowden tube fitting, so I had to use M3 nuts as spacers to fix it properly. Something I intend to fix in the future version of the design. This 3010 fan mounts directly to the heatsink. And now we can move to the electrical connections. Make sure your printer is powered off before attempting any electrical work. The terminal screws are absolutely tiny, so I had to use the screwdriver provided with the kit. Nothing else would fit. After carefully sizing the wires, you can cut them to length and strip the ends with the help of a wire stripper. The connections are very easy as everything is labeled. Same process for the thermistor and heater wiring. You may have noticed that the cooling fan is missing. I am going to add that later. And after wiring the tool plate, just repeat the same with the fixed plate. After you have made the connections, take some time to verify everything, especially the polarity of the fans. The thermistor and heater cartridge don't have a polarity, so they are more forgiving. Last thing you want is your board to blow up. Unfortunately, I speak from experience. And with that, you have finished most of the work. You will probably need to adjust your end stop positions, but there is no loss in print area. You might have noticed that there is no cooling fan duct, so that was my first print job. But I noticed these weird horizontal bands on my print. 
As you may know from my previous videos, I spent a lot of time fixing Z banding issues and this was a bit of a shock. But thankfully it was just because of huge temperature swings in the hot end temperature. I went from the stock Creality hot end to this one, so naturally a quick PID autotune was required. And so the print continued, but I needed a cooling fan to cool my cooling fan. And with that, the upgrade is complete. I just have this one tool head for now, but I will be making others in the future. The possibilities are endless. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.